College. This video is a continuation of this series where I just want to talk about what it's like to actually work in a real game development job. And today I wanted to tell a story that I thought was pretty interesting. I've told a couple times, usually written, but now I'm actually going to say it out loud and just kind of go over what happened. This is a big, big disaster for one of the, well actually the first game that I technically worked on. It was a big AAA game. It was an MMORPG. And uh, the game was actually pretty damn good. It was it was a fun game. I really loved it. I, I loved working on it and stuff. But when I got onto the team, the game had just launched. So it had been out for, I think, maybe a couple of weeks at the time. And I was playing it actively before that. But there were a lot of problems. So the player base was dropping really, really fast. You know, we had... Um, I don't know the actual numbers anymore, but the reported numbers that I saw were like 200,000. I think it was around 100 and, 100 and something thousand, 200,000 people that had purchased this game. They'd bought it, they were out there ready to play, and then um, never really did anything. So they, they didn't really play at all. I, I, I was actually tasked to do some data analytics, dive into our database, and figure out oh, what was going on. Why were people not playing you know, why, why were our subscriber numbers dropping you know, just kind of get an idea of what was happening and I say task to, I think I may have even volunteered for this because I thought it was really interesting I was trying to figure out what was happening with the player base you know, we saw big numbers and then huge huge drops so what I found when I was diving through this this data was that the majority of our players at least I think it was more than half never got past level one. In fact, most of those players never got any experience. They never killed anything. So if you played an MMO before, you know, you like you create a character, you log in, and within maybe a minute you're off, you know, killing your first rat or whatever the hell it is. You're doing something though. Most people were not getting to that point, which led me to believe that either they were not able to log in or they were crashing when they logged in or they just couldn't move around at all. Uh, maybe there are some big, big issues there. And I already knew at the time that there were some relatively big performance issues. I had a relatively high-end PC being a gaming addict, and you know, so did everybody else working on the project. But I think the majority of players, you know, they came from playing things like World of Warcraft, where you could get away with playing on your grandma's 12-year-old computer. It may not be perfect, but it was still going to play. And our game was not. It wasn't even going to start. You were going to get maybe one frame a second, probably less than that. And that was a huge problem, right? Like most people, I think uh, everybody at the company may have underestimated how big of an issue performance was with this game when it launched. So I guess this was around the same time as when I was building out the, um, the data app that I mentioned in the previous video. But somebody else was sitting across from me, Jared. He was new to the team, and his first task for this whole project was to dive in and figure out performance. He was tasked with profiling. And unfortunately, before the game launched, there really wasn't much profiling done, if any. Nobody really had a profiler set up. Nobody had anything going. Everybody was so busy with trying to get this game launched and released and get all of these promised features done and everything ready for the publishers meeting all their deadlines. Nobody ever spent the time to actually profile. And I assume that's just because everybody assumed somebody else was doing it or nobody really knew how to do it or everybody thought, hey, we'll hit that later. You know, like we'll get to, we'll get to that soon. It's not a huge priority. And again, when you're playing on really high-end systems and developing on high-end systems, you may kind of mask that problem. And it doesn't seem like as big an issue in the average developer's mind. So people aren't thinking like, hey, we really need to fix performance. And the same same exact thing can be said like if you're doing mobile stuff. So you're working on a, a game. Oh, yeah. If you're working on a game for phones, do not do all of your development on a high-end phone. Like, do some, sure. You know, sometimes you want to test, test on a high-end phone. Test on the thing that the majority of your customers are going to use. Or... Uh, Maybe not the lowest end device all the time, but at least on the average device. Don't go for the high end one because that like said, totally skews everybody's perspective. So anyway, I'll get back to, to Jared and his profiling. 
So he has just started the project. I think he may have been just out of college, if I remember right. I have to ask him. But he was a brilliant guy, but really new to the project and trying to figure out how do we profile this game. Like There weren't a lot of options around at the time. Eventually he ended up using VTune. I don't remember if that was just he found it on his own or somebody else had recommended it. But he used VTune. It's a Intel's profiler for C++. And since the game was all in Unreal, C++ profiler was perfect. So he goes through, I don't remember the exact amount of time, maybe a week, maybe two, just profiling, trying to figure out where the hot spots were. What are the biggest problems? And... You know, throughout this time, people had been trying to optimize things, optimizing the rendering, um, going through different parts of code that they thought were probably the pain points or the problems, and trying to optimize that. I think at the time, we'd even limited the size of raids temporarily, just trying to figure out like how, how to optimize the player's performance or the player's play experience so that they're able to get in and you know, not run like crap. But... Um, no, oh, everybody was wrong. Like the ideas for what the problem were, like there may have been some other little hot spots, but they weren't the big problem. The surprising thing that Jared found out was the biggest hot spot in the code, the biggest problem was actually just in some UI code that was just suboptimal. It was actually doing well, let's dive into UIs for just a moment. So most MMO UIs now have the ability for the player to customize the UI. And they want to go in and add in their own little elements or change the way the elements look, rearrange the UI completely. And this game had some support for that. Unfortunately, the way it supported it was with named tags of all of these elements that had to match by string name. And the client was doing a bunch of string comparisons every single frame to see the values of these things, whether they had changed or not. Um, and it was a lot. It was when I say a lot, I mean we were in the million plus string comparisons per frame just to render this UI. Completely unnecessary and totally terrible for performance. This, I, the, it's just mind-boggling how bad the performance of this thing was. Because about a week, maybe two weeks later, Jared actually fixed this system and I don't remember everything that he did to fix it I'm sure he did quite a bit um, probably making it not update every frame but he also replaced all of the strings with um, with bytes or you know some it, maybe it was an injury you know I don't remember but he replaced it with something other than strings so that we weren't comparing strings every frame and then I think he like I said I think he went in and did some extra optimization so that stuff wasn't updating every frame but I, I don't really remember the 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 end result, though, was huge, right? Frame rates practically doubled overnight. It may have been more than that, just instantly. And the, the low-end frame rate suddenly went from, you know, sub-1 up to, you know, what you would expect on a low-end system, 10, 15, 20 frames a second. So on those systems, it was just a night and day difference because, remember, those systems were all CPU limited and they weren't even getting to the point where they were hitting the GPU. They're just really old CPUs and really bad or really badly performant UI code. Um, anyway, I thought this was really interesting that you know, everybody had spent so much time and so much energy and lost so much over such a simple thing that was relatively easy to find. Like I said, Jared was new to the team, just out of college, and found this issue in like a week of just profiling right from, you know, like, hey, day one I'm profiling, trying to figure this out. and found it like if we had done that before this game had launched i think the end result could have been dramatically different i think the game would have made significantly more money it certainly would have had a lot more players that played for two months instead of buying the game once and never even paying for their subscription because they just couldn't play it because performance was so bad and it also would have helped retain all those people that were on the mid-end systems where you know the game was still playable but just not great because it kind of ran crappy um anyway i guess the the key takeaway here is just uh profile your damn game like don't don't guess if you if you're not sure what's causing the performance problem don't just try to you know poke and fix it different things 
just do some actual profiling, look at the systems, see what's actually taking up all the time, and then fix those things. Don't, like, main thing is just don't guess. Just, just use the damn tools that are there and take advantage of them. It'll make a huge, huge difference in your game and, uh, you know, could stop your game from being a disaster or a big failure because of performance problems. So, I guess that's all I wanted to say about this. Uh, I just thought it was a really interesting story. And that's it. I'm going to quit rambling. Anyway, I've got a lot more of these just on day-to-day -day stuff that goes on. And I plan on hitting a lot of these just over the next couple weeks. If you have questions, though, just about game, like working in a game job, specific like specific questions that you want to have answered, uh, drop them down below and let me know. And I'll, tr I'll try to get to those, too. Just kind of work those into this whole series. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and become a game developer yourself. All right, thanks.